my good friend Alex was gracious enough to let me borrow his beautiful BMW M5 for the day so I could show you guys how I capture car audio for my videos and what I use. So the main reason I'm doing this is because I get a lot of questions on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and all that kind of stuff of how do I capture the audio I do for these car shoots. Um, and pretty much it's just going to be a quick rundown of the type of equipment I've used in the past, uh, the equipment that I use now, some do's and don'ts, how to hook it up, what you can and can't use, and things like that. Once again, shout out to Alex, aka Raf, aka The Don for letting me borrow this M5 today for the shoot. The downshift sounds so good on this car, ready? Ah, oh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> If I get one thumbs up and one comment on this video, I'm gonna make Alex do a nasty burnout on this thing. So here are some pieces of equipment that I've used in the past or currently used to capture car audio. So I have a Zoom H1 here with a Rode lavalier mic. I have a Zoom H5 recorder, Rode wireless mics, Manfrotto suction cup mount, a rig wheels magnet with lens cloth, and neon pink gaffers tape, the best kind. So one way to capture car audio is using the Zoom H1 recorder. Um, right attached to it is a Rode lavalier mic. And now if you'll see here, there's actually a, a dead cat or a windsock attached to this. So actually, if you don't have anything attached to it, it would look like this, but generally all lavalier mics have a little foam piece that goes over the top to help stop from rubbing and other things like that. Uh, for recording car audio, or, or just any audio in general while you're outside, having a windsock or a dead cat on is extremely important because it re greatly reduces a lot of the wind noise that you're going to get in your audio. So the way I actually used to attach this to a vehicle to capture the audio is using this rig wheels magnet and this lens cloth. Now the reason I say the lens cloth is because you basically just don't want to harm the car that you know, you're know you doing the audio for. So it's really important to have this so it doesn't leave any sort of marks, marring, anything like that. So pretty much what I would do is attach the magnet, the same size uh, threads here, in the screw hole, whatever you want to call it, right? Make sure that's tight and put the lens cloth over the magnet. Now the magnets from, uh, from rig wheels are actually really strong. Uh, so, I mean, you can mount these bad boys on anything, they won't move. So, you listen here, ready? Nice little tap, make sure that's tight. Oh, and obviously you wanna make sure the, the surface of the car that you're putting any of this stuff on is clean. Uh, so everything sticks properly. Now realistically, where you place the recorder completely depends on the type of vehicle you have and, and the mounting points that you get. Same with the suction cup. Um, for right now, just demonstrating, I'll just put it right there. So next, microphone placement is extremely important. Pretty much, if you were to, let's say, place the microphone up here, you'll hear the exhaust noise, but you're also gonna get a lot of wind. Let's say you're on the highway or a side road, this and that, the microphone actually most likely not going to be close enough to the exhaust to where you're going to get a really good and clear sound. So pretty much on, on each vehicle, depending on the type of exhaust it has, whether it's a stock exhaust or a really loud aftermarket one or cutouts, whatever it has, you're kind of going to have to play around with where the microphone should actually be placed because there have been instances where, you know, I'll place it right here because the exhaust isn't loud enough. Uh, or I'll place it here because the exhaust is really loud. Um, but you kind of just really need to test and, and see where you want to place the microphone depending on the car, the type of exhaust, and things like that. So once you find out where you want to have your microphone placement, you're going to take your neon pink gaffer's tape, or if you have painter's tape, anything that's not going to leave uh, a good amount of residue uh, because you just don't want that on the car. So you find your good mounting point for your lavalier mic. I like to put a piece of tape lightly on the car first, so the lav mic doesn't scratch anything. And you'll put another one on top of it to hold it. Make sure the lav mic is pointing downwards because they are fairly directional. Then just so you don't want the cable flopping around or anything like that, you're going to take more gaffer's tape and just kind of neatly 
neatly place the wires in the proper position. I like to have the wires fairly, fairly tight so they don't flop around, the cord doesn't get screwed up or anything like that. So the way the Zoom H1 recorder like this would work is you'd have the owner turn on the car and pretty much just you would set the level of this uh, to pretty much the rev range that you want the car to be at. The only thing that stinks about recorders is that you know once you set it and you have him go drive off if you, or if you sit in the car with him, uh, that's it. You can't change the level again until you stop. Um, that's one of the downsides of really just you know a recorder compared to like a wireless mic system. But in a pinch, they're great. They're cheap. They're efficient. So this is something I started out with. You know, I still use on certain occasions um, for like a secondary audio source, backup, whatever. Um, it really is a great, great recorder and setup for capturing basic car audio. Now the wireless mic system is great to use because you can monitor it in camera or with the Zoom H5. Um, like I said, these are the this is the Rode wireless kit. Sony makes a great wireless system. Sennheiser makes a fantastic wireless system. But bang for your buck, I mean the Rode system is amazing. Uh, pretty much, if you take a look here. They're all, it's basically plastic. You'll notice with the Sony and Sennheiser ones, you'll have the antenna sticking out, but like the casing in general is a much better material. The reason why these are plastic is because the antenna is actually on the inside. So to me, it looks a little cleaner without the antennas, but you're sacrificing the, the quality on the outside. But overall, it's an amazing microphone system. So there's pretty much two ways you can set up audio with the wireless mics. Uh, pretty much this receiver here, uh, and this cord would go into your camera and you can monitor the levels like that. The only downside is that you're wasting video footage time because you'd have to be recording the entire time of you know, the, the, the length of the audio that you're taking. Or you can set it up to this Zoom H5 and you can monitor the levels all on here. Um, I'd say the one benefit to using the Zoom H5, since it is an audio recorder specific, it has more features and a little better audio technology than let's say just using uh, you know recording to the camera uh, but either way they're both great ideas very good to use handy this is the transmitter this is the lavalier mic you would set up the lavalier mic in the same way you know you would have done with the H1 um, now for this sometimes what I use depending on the car because a lot of high-end vehicles they're not like metal they might be carbon fiber or you know if you're have a modified car with a fiberglass body kit, the magnet's not always going to work. So suction cup is a great idea. This one's from Manfrotto. Oh. So essentially, you would figure out a way to mount your <laughs> transmitter to the suction cup mount. Spin that on. And then, I would never ever attach this to a car's paint. Always on glass. <laughs> God forbid. Unless I absolutely had to and I had the owner's permission, otherwise it's going on the glass. So you would put it on the glass, pump it, make sure it's, it's down on there tight, and you would run the wire the same way you did with this to a proper position. You would tape it on for the sake of saving time, just gonna, just gonna leave it. One thing that I did forget to bring out uh, that I failed to mention is with the wireless mic setup, noise canceling headphones are your best, best friend. You can hear completely clearly, you know, if there's any audio discrepancies, if you need to go higher, lawyer, uh, lower. Um, so if you have, me personally, if you have like iPhone earbuds or stuff like that, you really hear too much from the outside to tell if you're really getting the proper audio. Ironically, this is being filmed on a shotgun mic, frankly, because I was too lazy to set up wireless mics. But anyway, these noise canceling headphones are from Sennheiser. Uh, for the price, they're absolutely incredible. These were, I think, $100 on B&H or Amazon, wherever I got them from and they're incredible for the price. So definitely pick up a pair of these. So as I was saying before, the receiver would either go into your camera and you would monitor the levels on that with your headphones, of course, or it would go into something like a Zoom H5 or H4 or any other recorder that can take the proper cable. Um, and that's how you would monitor the levels either in the car with the owner telling him what to do, certain rev range, this and that, or following next to him if your wireless mics are good enough to you know, move around like that. There are of course many other ways to do car audio. Um, obviously shows like Top Gear and this and that use 
much, much different audio equipment. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to capture audio more, I wouldn't say professionally, but with more expensive equipment and audio engineers and things like that. But these systems are quick, efficient, fairly inexpensive, and for what people need generally, this is gonna do an amazing job. And I just wanna reiterate, guys, that whenever you're doing this kind of stuff, be really careful with how and where you mount them. Obviously, there's different ways to mount them, different places, all that kind of stuff, but just be mindful of what you're putting it on. Also, really quick, if you guys can remember, I always try and bring some sort of microfiber, some sort of detail spray, so if, you know, the tape or something leaves a mark or a little residue, you can always wipe it off so the owner isn't mad. <laughs> so I hope this helped you guys a little bit. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you want me to do more of these videos in terms of equipment that I use or how I do a certain thing a certain way, you know, comment on this video and I'm gonna provide links to all these products down below so you can take a look at them, take a look at pricing, see what you do and don't need, and uh, that's pretty much it.